Exactly, Gloria. She's in the house. That's correct. All right. There we go. There we go. Sorry about that. You see, that's okay. This, I heard you saying this is all new to you. It's all new to me too, because I have two Instagram channels and I'll be very candid. Uh, up until maybe a couple of months ago, I have someone who worked with me when I was co-hosting the talk and he did all my social media. So, you know, we're moms, we're wives. I'm like, great. Cause otherwise you go down the rabbit hole. So I would say, he'd say, hey, you want to post something on this? I said, yeah, let's do this. And he goes, done. So I never had, I never knew how to do the technology of it all. Listen, I understand. I use, so my husband always makes fun of me that he says that I'm like, I'm an independent woman because I did live in Manhattan for 10 years as a basically single woman and I did do everything myself. But getting married, you kind of have to be willing to let the other person do stuff for you. And so now I, de I do depend on him to do a lot of stuff for me. So he always makes like a snide remark a little bit like independent woman. Like <laughs> It's so true. It's so true. The first time my husband saw me hail a cab for me and him, he was like, what are you doing? Because I too lived in, you know, the city for many years. I mean, I'm from Queens. So I grew up I there. Saw, like, I'm oh. from Long Island, by the way. Oh, we're in Long Island. Uh, Woodbury, Syosset. Yes, I have an aunt in Syosset. You and do? My, yep. And my best friend from high school, we went to St. Francis Prep in yep. Fresh Meadows, Queens. Um, her husband has a, um, a practice in Syosset and Huntington, a bunch of places. He's like an oral doctor? surgeon. He's an oral okay. surgeon. Yeah. This is so funny you're saying this because my dad is a periodontist and his office is in Bayside, Queens. That's where I grew up. In Bayside? Bayside, Queens. In That's Bayside Village. 11364 or 11361? 11360. Oh. Yeah, 209th Street and 15th Road. Yep. Wow. Okay, he's 214th Street and 56th Avenue. And he's across from a, a I don't know if it's, a, I think it's maybe Catholic private school called St. Bartolomo's, I believe. Oh, no. Then I, no. I didn't go, I went to a Catholic high school. But then yeah. prior to that, I went to public school, PS 209, junior high school 194, both in Whitestone, which is just down the road from Bayside, you know, they're adjacent. Yes, I know very well. I worked for him for a long time in Bayside, actually, before I moved out here. So I'm very familiar with the Long Island Railroad and all the stops and everything. So oh, yes, the one thing I would never venture to do was take the bus, though. Oh, the Q13, Q16, that was like my life growing up. I you know. know. <laughs> yeah, no, the bus. Oh, and then if you wanted to go into the city, you have to take the QM2, Queens, Manhattan 2. <laughs> yeah, the Third Avenue line or the Sixth Avenue line. Yeah, a whole thing. This is a whole world that nobody knows about, by the way. So I know. They're like, what is she talking about? Anyhow. Exactly. All right, well, we'll get started. And look, Julie, you were right. We, we name dropped Julie Chen Moonvase and our viewers just a hundred X basically. Yay. So, yay, yeah. Yay. I love it. Big brother fans are loyal. Let me tell you. Oh, uh, well, first of all, let's talk about that for a second. So you just signed on for season 23. Yes. However, it's going to be the 26th cycle of the show because we call it, we call the regular, you know, some like season one, season two, and we don't, add the numbers when we do a celebrity version, which we've done two of. And then we did one that was only online. They call it OTT over the top. And that was an experiment. Maybe it'll come back. So we've done three that don't even get counted into the, you know, season 22 number, but yeah. So next summer, season 23, uh, we are coming back. You know, hopefully we get off on time as any Big Brother viewer knows. We didn't launch like around, we usually launch late June. We launched August 5th because of COVID-19. And by the grace of God, we launched, period. You know, when they kept pushing it back, they were like, oh, Julie, uh, instead of late June, I think we're going to launch, you know, more like around July 4th. Okay. Then it was like, oh, Julie, uh, I think not till July 15th. Okay. Then they that's said- That's my August, birthday. <laughs> that's your birthday? But go on. Yeah. And yeah, then yeah, they whatever. said probably um, August 5th. By this time, you know, I had so many calls like, oh, pushing back, pushing back. 
I'm just like eating a bowl of cereal at home. Like, uh-huh. Yeah, right. Right, right. We'll be August. <laughs> and then when we really did, I was like, oh, they weren't kidding. Like, I better, you know, go to get the, my, like, get go my to dress, the gym, right? get something ready to wear, you know. <laughs> so. well, but you know what? It's kind of a COVID-proof place because, like, it how was... they don't leave. I'm telling you, we were ahead of our time, Megan. It was... <laughs> We are the original quarantine. I mean, <laughs> back in- That should be the tagline of the show right now. Right, exactly. Like the original OG quarantine. I mean, yes. think about it. It was 20 years ago, because we launched the summer of 2000. And it's like 10 strangers locked away from the outside world. So it was like divine timing for us to uh, be able to get off the ground all we really had to do, I mean, there was a lot, not all we really had to do. We had to test all the house guests who we picked to go back in because it was an all-star season. Uh, once they tested negative, we had to quarantine each person individually by themselves for two weeks in you know, an Airbnb or a hotel or rental, whatever. Uh, and then we had to, as staff and crew, um, half of us work from home, you only came into the office if you were like essential worker to the Big Brother product. Um, and, you know, my my stepdaughter, she was like, are you going to do the show from like the garage? I said, no, I'm going <laughs> in the studio. I mean, technically, well, I guess I could. you're so far from the person now. Like, it's almost like, wow, this is, I think it's 18 feet social distancing. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's like, hey, you know, we're on live TV. We don't want to take any chances. So we, we want to set a good example for everyone else, right? So, but yeah. But the well, nice thing was yeah. once everyone got into the house, the show looked like how fans are used to seeing it. You know, everyone tested negative. So they were living and breathing and competing and, you know, doing everything that they normally would have if there wasn't COVID-19 in yeah. the Big Brother house. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's amazing. You know, just not related to what you're saying at all, but I'm just whenever I hear the word COVID testing, the only time I've had a COVID test was when I was in labor. Oh, Literally, because right. I, you have to get you so is three months. Oh, so I arrive, I had my baby at Cedar sinai and which by the way, is the best hospital. I'm obsessed with it. You know, and, that's where um, I delivered. Yep. Great. Oh, okay. <laughs> and um, I'm literally in between contractions. They're like, we need to stick this up your nose and give you a COVID test. I'm like, can this get any worse? <laughs> Good times. Hey, it's all worth it. You know? I know. I, I know. mean, having a child is the only thing that in life that is not overrated. It's like everyone's like, oh, it's so great. So great. You don't really know until you walk that walk. So yes. Exactly. And you're in the beginning yeah. of it. It just gets better and it gets easier. It gets easier. Let me Thank tell you. you. It does. I yeah. mean, right now, it's, you should be glad that you can't travel or go anywhere because oh, if you could, you're, you're like packing for an army. It's like just this, this little baby needs like the stroller, the baby seat, the this, the, the, the diaper bag. You're like, I'm exhausted. <laughs> I know. And also the, the stroller that I have and the car seat I have are like 3,000 pounds. I'm like, who is carrying this car seat around? Like I'm literally, it's like an anchor for a ship. Oh, yes. <laughs> By the way, my son is now 11. I'm still like in physical therapy because of like, he was a chunky, he was a chunky little guy. And this, this left arm was like the perch that he would sit on. And you know, you have your hip and that yes. right handed. So you could like make stuff, write stuff, do yes. stuff, take a phone call. This, my left shoulder and left hip will never be the same, but it's okay because it's a reminder of the love, the love <laughs> between child and parent. Good. Well, that, I think that's a good segue to our event because Modern Day Wife is all about balancing and not just balancing, but like really thriving at being in a, like having a family dynamic, career, possibly children some semblance of a social life and really trying to balance all of these various different things. So we're so excited to be having you as one of our opening speakers on December 6th. Thank you. Thank you. It's my pleasure and truly a privilege and an honor. 
Yes, thank you. Yeah, well, we have really unbelievable speakers. So Haley Duff just signed on about a week and a half ago. I love her. Yes, yes. Yes. I've interviewed her before. She's so lovely. You know, I think I think someone asked her once, like, I think we were trying to get her to be like a permanent co-host of the talk. And if she never got that call, then her agent didn't tell her. <laughs> we were like, I know we talked about it in back rooms back back then, you know, but I haven't been there in two years, so. Wow. Yeah, that's a phone call you would not want to miss, I'm sure, <laughs> if you're being offered to be on the talk. Well, who knows? You know, it's like you would think and then people are like, I have other projects. I have this, I have that, or I can't, or, you know, the, the schedule. It has to be, you know, it has to fit for all things that us women uh, juggle. You know, women, we are multitaskers and it's not a, a real day until you have like 12 plates spinning in the air. Like, da, 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 you know. Yeah. It's interesting you say that because what I realized recently is... I'm doing this, I need to enjoy it rather than, you know, moping that I'm getting four hours of sleep or, or acting more dramatic than I need to about how many things I'm doing. I finally was like, no, this is my life. I need to actually enjoy what I'm doing and just make it like a game. Like, okay, look, look how much I'm doing and not, you know, more half, more half cup full rather than the half glass empty, whatever it is. <laughs> Good for you for acknowledging that being a new mom with a three month old baby boy, because you know, I know when my son was three months, I probably didn't have the wisdom. I was too, uh, I don't know, grouchy to have the wisdom to say what you should have said. But <laughs> uh, I have in the last couple of years really leaned into my faith and, and to God. Yeah. And that's one of the things God says, like, don't grumble. Be thankful for everything, no matter what. You know, be thankful you woke up this morning. Be thankful that you can inhale oxygen and exhale carbon dioxide. You know, it's just like, yeah. That gives me the chills. It's so true. Yeah. Like, and plus, who wants to be around a complainer? Exactly. Okay. You know, but being from Long Island, it's kind of part of the culture. It can be our brand a little bit, you know, I mean, Bayside is very close to Long Island and I worked uh, in Long Island for many summers in retail, you know, like summer jobs at Roosevelt yeah. Field Mall. Oh um, my God. So yeah, you know, it, it is, it is a little bit of, you know, our brand, but underneath all that is love, you know, yes. it comes from a place of love. Yes. And I'm half joking, but it's true. You leave Long Island and it's kind of like, okay. This is now real life. We don't talk like this all the time. You know, like you have to learn that there's other cultures and other people. So anyways, but um, back to the event. Yes. So it's Haley Duff. We have uh, Erica Christensen from Parenthood, Swim Fan Traffic. I just saw a movie with her Friday night. You did? Yeah. But she's she's in a great movie um, called... Uh, Upside of Anger. The, the, the Case for Christ. Okay. And it was, um, a, it's a movie based on a true story, a book that I'm reading right now by a former journalist, now, now turned pastor by the name of Lee Strobel. And okay. in short, she plays the wife where she finds Jesus and she was always an atheist and so was her husband. And her husband's like, excuse me, who did I marry? And then so as an investigative award-winning journalist, he's on this mission to prove to her, like, don't believe in Jesus, like, don't believe in God. And as wow. the more he digs, at the end, I'm not, I'm not spoiling anything. I mean, I am, but everyone knows that if you're reading the book, he becomes a Christian because he can't, he can't disprove everything she believes wow. in Jesus and God. Yeah, it's like, whoa. So I just saw her in a movie. She has the most perfect teeth. Her teeth are like, oh, we're gonna have to show her this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she does. They have this one scene where it's a flashback where the husband's like thinking about the girl he married and what happened to her. And they have like a flashback of their, their wedding scene. And she's like, and it's like slow mo, it's music. And she's like, and I look at her teeth. I'm like, wow, she has perfect teeth. Oh yeah. my God. I'm she's a very talented actress. She was great oh, yeah, in traffic is. also. And that was her breakthrough movie. And she was quite young as well. So yeah. Yeah, she's playing Amazing. a teenage daughter who got messed up in drugs. Yeah, she was great in exactly. that. Exactly. Very, very talented actor. Yes. Oh, good. I'm. We're gonna. We're gonna edit this and show it to her. But um, okay. So we have Erica Haley, you, which we'll get to in a second. 
uh, Tracy Tudor from Million Dollar Listing LA, uh, Gloria Chow, who was on here, who is a PR and publicity guru. Nice. Um, Melissa Ben Ishe, who's the founder of Baked by Melissa, which is a big cupcake line in New York. Oh, I know it. They have the little, the little cupcakes. Yes. They're, they're uh, where we used to live in New York. I, I wonder if it's still there, is right around the corner from us. And that became like the father son thing on like Sunday mornings, you know. My son would say, hey, dad, you want to spend some al alone time? You know, my husband would be like, yeah. He's like, let's take a walk around the corner to Baked by Melissa. And oh as a God. mom who doesn't really, you know, who's like, wait, what, what snack you're having? You mean it's not a celery stick? I was like, all <laughs> right, Baked by Melissa's okay. You know, it's still, let's bring me one too. And they're tiny, you know. Yes. Oh, that's so what? cute. I love that. She could make that into a little commercial. <laughs> there you go. Moms approve. Mo mom approve. Yep. Exactly. Okay. Uh, Elena Cardone, who is uh, married to Grant Cardone, and they have a huge Create Your Own Empire campaign. They have 10x growth cons in Vegas with literally probably 50,000 people. So she's going to be speaking. And um, Janelle Alvarado, who is a retail boss. She's the executive for that. She basically connects up with small, bu small business makeup brands with uh, stores that will sell them. I'm going through our speaker's grid in my mind. Um, I think I'm not leaving anyone out. But uh, in any event, let's talk about you and your segment. Um, yes. You're basically going to be talking about sticking to your goals, uh, not having toxic people around, how to persevere. So just tell us a little bit about what people can expect from what they're going to learn from you in this segment. People can expect to hear... Um... I'm going to tell you the mistakes I made early on so that you don't have to make them. You know, uh, I just turned 50 this year. So I've lived a little bit and I'm going to tell people like basically the story of how I went from Queens to, I want to say Hollywood because like my real passion and path was news. And then I'm going to tell you how like, I went from Queens with hopes of becoming, you know, a 60 Minutes correspondent and how on earth did I land at Big Brother in a daytime talk show by way of starting my, you know, original passion of being a news correspondent slash anchor. Um, that and also all the mistakes I made along the way and um, how I learned from them. You know, you always want to hear, don't you love like a good story, like a what do they call those tales? But it's like a learning moment. Like someone else tells you like, oh, I did this, don't do that. And you're like, oh, I remember hearing that story from, you know, Aunt Sally who said she did that once and then like her finger was never the same or whatever, the, you know, a cautionary tale. So I'll share some of those stories. Some of my war stories, you know, I, I covered the war uh, in 2003, I was sent there. What that was like, it just, Wow. Little pockets of, you know, my life and career, um, some funny things, some serious things, you know, and how I got to where I am today and what I hope to do, you know, in the future. So uh, wow. that's perfect. And that is, um, by the way, just because we're talking, we're, we both said we're new at this. I realized I probably should look at the camera, even though I'm not looking at you. So sorry. <laughs> no, hey, I'm not even noticing. I'm, I'm just it's like my looking. peripheral vision. <laughs> I'm doing this on my phone. So like, I feel like, you know, I can kind of just like look at one thing and see everything. But yes, I don't well, know how you're, it looks. You're very experienced at this. Okay, you're the you are the expert on hosting and television. So I'm sure you would this would come very naturally to you. So but um, <laughs> from the person who didn't know how to sign on, I'm like, Oh, wait, how long I sign up? When you sent me the email how to do it, I was like, Oh, you're like, you, it was so comforting when you said, this is new to me too. So if you have any questions, uh, okay. so sorry, I wasn't totally on time with, from my right account, but I signed no. on from my other account, which I just started with some of my friends from more than 25, 30 years. Uh, we all love the word of God. We were just doing like a little online um, wow. church service. My, yes. Basically, you know, my first job, wanting to be a 60 Minutes correspondent. Um, my first job was covering local news in Dayton, Ohio. And my favorite news photographer there, 
has now uh, moved to Boston and has, he's now a pastor. And he wow. still works in news. He's actually wow. still does, he's still, he's now an editor, but um, you know, he's also around 50. If you carry that camera gear for so many years, like talk about a hip, you know, but, and a shoulder that gives out, you know, it's nice to be in an edit bay sometimes, especially those Boston winters. So, but yeah. So at Have Faith Family is where, uh, if you go follow us there every day, you're going to see one minute devotional messages from my pastor, his wife, who's a deacon, who was my 6 p.m. news producer in Dayton, Ohio. Oh That's where they God. met. And then the other two members of this cast of characters is my college roommate from USC oh Journalism School, who's now a Fox News Channel anchor reporter. She's been at Fox News Channel oh. for 20 years. And then our third Journalism School buddy, um, back in the 80s, we all graduated in 91 from USC Journalism School, wow. Walt Makaborski, who is a um, <laughs> news anchor and reporter in Austin, Texas. So I mean, these are deep friendships, deep rooted friendships. Like we go back to even before we got into the business, you know, or just starting in the business, the pastor, wow. you know, that was my first TV job and for his first TV job and his yeah. wife's first, no, maybe her second TV job. You move around in local markets, you know, when you're in your twenties. Is the husband and the wife, the ones who are on the top left usually? Yes. Yes, exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. I did yep. check it out. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. It was very. I was very. It was very refreshing to see that, especially coming out of Los Angeles. It was very nice to see that you're doing that. I, I personally really appreciated that. Oh, it's that's very so nice. important. I'm telling you, Megan, and anyone who's listening, it's like most of us are feeling like, when is this, you know, COVID nineteen going to end? When am I going to be able to take the vaccine? Is it okay to take the vaccine? There's a lot of anxiety. This I met. Lee Body, now Pastor Lee Body, and his wife, Danita, 25 years ago for a reason. Like, we thought we were all just young kids starting out covering news, but God had a plan for us to be together starting this Have Faith Family Instagram channel before we knew in the, in the, in the 90s, what is Instagram, um, to try and like spread some positivity and yes. some faith and some hope and yes. be uplifting, you know? I mean... I didn't, you know, I did. I went to a Catholic high school, but I was never religious. I, you know, I was, I, I was too busy trying to, you know, be fabulous or too busy trying to like chasing after my career. And it's like, for what, you know, God is always there for me. And I learned that the hard way. You'll hear about it, how I had to, how I had to fall on my butt to uh, really say, okay, God, you got my attention. What now? So you'll hear about that in the okay. December 6th event. Well, I honestly, I love everything you said. And, and I think everyone should definitely watch your segment and come to the event because you're obviously a person who has a lot of experience and a lot of um, continuity, you know, to ha be a host of a TV show going into its 26th yeah, whatever. Season. <laughs> I know. It's like, well, we'll just call it 23rd, 23rd, BB23. 20, 23 officially, 26 unofficially. Um, but um, like not probably 0.0001 people on this planet could actually say anything remotely close to that type of uh, or saying that they have that kind of experience or resume. So Definitely. I'm really excited to hear what you're going to talk about. I know everyone's going to learn so much from you. And for everyone who's watching, please uh, go to the Modern Day Wife link in our bio and get your tickets today. Uh, you can get $10 off with the promo code SOCIAL in all caps. Um, and we really want everyone to come, not just for the event, but we'll also have a digital marketplace that's 72 hours the day before, the day of, and the day after the event. That's all small businesses. And um, we really want to encourage everyone to shop these small businesses because we need to support them during this time period, which is really important to us. So um, it's a win-win situation. And we, everyone watching, you know, spread the word. We're going to post this IGTV on our page so you can share it with other people to hear what Julie's going to talk about. And, you know, we really appreciate having you today. It's an honor to be able to uh, talk to you here. 
I, I know you men spread the word about the December 6th event, but you know, of course I have my Bible right here. I'm like, oh, she said spread the word. Yes. Yes. And that, spread well, the good true. word. Yes. Listen, spread the word in, in your own faith and, and passing it on like the movie, pay it forward. Absolutely. Uh, when you do something good, it makes the other person feel good. And then we create just a much better world for all of us rather than starting the day honking at someone. And then that continues throughout the day in a negative way. So absolutely. Things really in Los Angeles, we really need it with so many of the things that are happening right now and spread the word on uh, Julie speaking and get your tickets. So I hope that, covers everything i think it does i got a little tip you know instead of starting your day honking at someone if you're the person who gets honked at this is really hard instead of you know being angry just look at that person and be like like one time i got honked at and i was like and i really knew i deserved that to be honked at because i don't remember what i did but then i was like yes and then they're like <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, I'm really, I'm sorry. Like, I know, you know, exactly. I agree with that a hundred percent. Okay, thank Julie. You, well, thank, thank you. you so, so much. And we have to cross our fingers that when I end this, I save it properly. So we have this recorded. So cross our fingers. Maybe yes. someone can write in the comments, like a tip. If I, it to plan it right now <laughs> oh dear father god please let megan hit the right button and technology and you be shining your light so that she can <laughs> save this and promote her event on december 6th with all uh, the other fabulous speakers so that we could spread some positivity and light and advice and career advice life advice to other uh, men and women out there who just want to hear something good in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. That was perfect and, and all very true. So thank you so much. This is really special, Julie. Thank you, Megan. Okay. See you December 6th. See you then. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs> you could bye press for now. Oh, yes. Bye for now. Bye for now. <laughs> Are you press it first. Okay, now I'm gonna press it, everyone here. I'm gonna press this X and it's gonna record it, right? Everyone give me the A-OK. -okay. Yes. Okay, here we go.